So Lung 1 is on the chest, six soon lateral to the midline, level with the first intercostal space. And the name of Lung 1 is Zhong Fu, which means middle palace. This is reminding us that the lung channel begins in the middle jiao, and also that this point can be used to treat middle jiao issues, like nausea and vomiting. Lung 1 is also the front mu point of the lung. Remember, front mu points are where the qi of the organs gathers on the front of the body. So lung 1 acts primarily on the lung organ and not necessarily the lung channel. So I would say the main strength of lung 1 is treating excess conditions. This could be exterior pathogens like wind heat or wind cold that have penetrated into the lung organ, or it could be interior disharmonies like lung heat or phlegm in the lung. For example, if an excess pathogen is blocking the descending function of the lung, we might see things like cough, wheezing, and shortness of breath. So we can use lung one to descend the lung chi and stop cough. Lung one also transforms phlegm which is an excess condition. So it can treat things like coughing up phlegm or chest pain due to phlegm in the chest. It clears heat, treating heat in the chest, or these situations where heat is blocking the descending of lung chi. And it regulates the water passages. So again, if an excess condition is interfering with the descending function of the lung, the lung can no longer descend the fluids and we may get acute swelling of the face. And like we said, lung one also has an effect on the stomach as well. Both the lung and the stomach have a downward action. The lung descends lung chi and the stomach descends food. So a disharmony of one can affect the other. So lung one descends both lung chi and stomach chi, treating things like vomiting, retching, and abdominal distension. Now technically, we do see things like nasal congestion and throat obstruction which might be considered disorders of the lung channel rather than the lung organ. But the idea here is, if there's so much excess in the lung organ, that might overflow into the lung channel. So by clearing it out of the lung organ, that might resolve those channel issues. But if we had things like nasal congestion and sore throat due to an external attack where the pathogen was still on the surface, we might not use lung one, we might prefer to use other points on the lung channel instead. So for lung one, I remember that it treats the lung organ, and it's mostly used for excess patterns, especially when there's phlegm or pain in the chest. Lung two is above lung one, just below the clavicle, six soon lateral to the midline. And lung two is honestly not that interesting. Machiocha actually says that lung two is very similar to lung one in its actions, but less strong. Maybe something we could point out is that because lung two is close to the shoulder in the deltopectoral triangle, it can be used for shoulder pain, especially when there's difficulty adducting the arm. Lung three is on the arm, three soon below the axillary fold. And lung three is a window of heaven point. This one is special because most window of heaven points are located on the neck, and lung three is one of the few that is not but the lung channel does go to the throat, so it makes sense that it could be a window of heaven point. So remember, these are the functions of the window of heaven points, and all of them are represented here. Window of heaven points treat disorders of the neck, and here we see lung three treats throat pain and goiter. Window of heaven points harmonize the flow of qi between the head and body, treating rebellious qi. And we see that here with cough and hemoptysis. Window of heaven points treat disorders of the sense organs, and here lung three treats dizziness and vision problems. Again, the lung has a descending function, so it's able to descend excess chi out of the head. Window of heaven points treat psycho-emotional disorders, and here lung three calms the corporeal soul, treating things like sadness, grief, and other shen problems. Besides being a window of heaven point, there are a few other interesting things we can note. Lung three cools the blood and stops bleeding. Remember, heat is one of the causes of bleeding in Chinese medicine. Heat causes things to speed up, so when heat gets into the blood, it can speed up the blood so much that it begins to move recklessly or frenetically outside of the vessels. So lung three can treat things like nosebleed or coughing up blood. And finally, we also see this funny indication of talking with ghosts or crying ghost talk. 
On the one hand, we could relate this to the fact that lung three is a window of heaven point and it treats psycho-emotional disorders and calms the corporeal soul. On the other hand, this is sometimes thought to refer to delirious speech that can happen during the end stage of pulmonary tuberculosis. So this might be a condition when there's heat in the lung and it's beginning to disturb the shen. As for the name, Tian Fu means heavenly palace. And this is just a common trend that most of our window of heaven points have the word heaven in the name. But as an alternative interpretation, Machiocha compares the name to Long One. Remember, we said that the name of Long One is Middle Palace because it has an effect on the middle jiao, treating rebellious stomach chi. Well, similarly, we could say that Long Three is named Heavenly Palace because it has an effect on the head, which is the heaven part of the body treating things like insomnia, forgetfulness, dizziness, and vision problems. But for lung three, I would mainly remember that it's a window of heaven point and it calms the corporeal soul, treating things like sadness and grief. Lung four is four soon distal to the axillary fold. And this is another one that's just not super interesting. If a point doesn't have a category, then it doesn't always do a whole lot. It descends lung chi, like every other point on this channel. It's on the arm, so it treats arm pain. Maybe one thing that stands out is it regulates chi and blood in the chest, treating heart pain and palpitations. Because, again, the heart and lung are buddies, and they reside together in the chest. But all in all, lung four is just not very interesting, and it's not a commonly used point. Lung five, on the other hand, is a commonly used point. Lung 5 is at the crease of the elbow on the radial side of the biceps brachii tendon. The main action of lung 5 is to clear heat and descend lung chi. If heat gets into the lung, it can interfere with the lung's descending function and cause the chi to rebel back upwards, giving us things like cough, wheezing, asthma, and shortness of breath. Fever, dry mouth, and throat pain are all signs of heat. And like we said earlier, heat can cause bleeding as well. So we see things like coughing up blood and nosebleed. And when heat gets into the lung, that heat can cook down the fluids of the lung and thicken them into phlegm. So lung five has an action of resolving phlegm as well, treating cough with phlegm. Now, when it comes to clearing this heat, Machiocha emphasizes that lung five is mostly used for excess conditions, whereas Deadman says that lung five can be used for both excess heat and deficiency heat. It just depends on which points you combine it with. So if you want to treat deficiency heat, you might need to combine lung fi with other points that nourish yin and moisten the lung. So that's something to keep in mind. Lung five is a he C point. Remember, he C points treat rebellious chi and diarrhea, and we see both of those here with cough, vomiting, and diarrhea. Lung five also regulates the water passages. You can maybe think that lung five is the he C water point, so it has an action of regulating the water passages. So again, if a pathogen obstructs the lung's descending function, then it can no longer descend fluids to the bladder and kidney, and we may end up with water retention. That's why we see things like edema, swelling of the limbs, and urinary retention. But if the lung is deficient, we may get frequent urination and enuresis. Lung 5 can be used in both situations. Besides that, lung 5 can also relax the sinews because it's right next to a sinew. Remember when we looked at the lung sinew channel, there was this binding site at the elbow right in the area of lung 5. So lung 5 can treat elbow pain and elbow stiffness. But because it's in the middle of the channel, lung 5 can actually relax the sinews all along the lung channel. So it's also good for shoulder pain, inability to raise the arm, and difficulty opening the hand. And the name of lung five is Chirzi cubit marsh because it's located on the cubital crease. And a marsh is kind of like a swamp. They tend to be hot and damp. So that's how I remember this point. Lung five is located in the pit of your elbow where it tends to get hot and sweaty. So lung five is good for clearing heat. And a marsh or a swamp is a place where there's a lot of standing water, so lung five also regulates water passages. So those are the things I would remember about lung five. Lung six is on the forearm, seven soon proximal to the wrist crease. 
so long six is seven soon up. And long six is a she cleft point. Remember, she cleft points treat acute conditions and pain. So here we see acute conditions like throat pain, loss of voice, or fever without sweating, usually due to wind heat or wind dryness. Acute conditions and pain can also mean pain along the channel. So we see things like elbow pain, arm pain, difficulty flexing and extending the fingers, and inability to raise the arm. But really, in modern practice, lung six is principally used for acute asthma attack. So that's the type of acute condition we would be treating. And finally, remember that she cleft points on the yin channels have an additional action of regulating the blood or treating disorders of the blood. So here, lung six also stops bleeding for things like coughing up blood and vomiting blood. Lung seven is one and a half soon proximal to the wrist crease off the line, just proximal to the styloid process between the two tendons. Lung seven is a very important point. We can see that it belongs to several different point categories and it has a lot of functions. So this means that lung seven has a wide range of actions and it's very commonly used in the clinic. So let's go through these functions one by one. First, remember that in the beginning, we said that the lung governs the exterior and the opening and closing of the pores. Well, lung seven is one of our major points for releasing the exterior and expelling wind for both wind cold and wind heat. So fever and aversion to cold are signs that we have this pathogen on the exterior. And like we said before, if a wind cold or wind heat pathogen gets into the lung, it can block the descending of lung chi, resulting in cough, wheezing, or shortness of breath. So lung seven also descends lung chi to treat these symptoms. And if that wind cold or wind heat pathogen interferes with the lung's action of descending the fluids, we may see facial edema, sudden swelling of the limbs, or urinary retention. So lung seven regulates the water passages to treat those symptoms as well. In addition to external wind, lung seven also treats internal wind as well especially in the head and upper body. That's why we say it pacifies wind and phlegm, treating things like headache, facial paralysis, and epilepsy. Ma Dan Yang named it one of his 11 heavenly star points for treating one-sided headache, wind painful obstruction and numbness of the entire body, phlegm obstruction in the upper body, and lockjaw. Gao Wu listed it as one of his four command points, being the command point for the head and nape. So lung seven is often used for headache and stiff neck. Lung seven is also the opening point for the Ren Mai, or conception vessel. The conception vessel is one of the eight extraordinary channels that we'll talk more about later. For now, we can just say that it's an extraordinary channel that runs up the anterior midline and connects with the uterus and genitals. So that's why we see lung seven treating conditions like uterine problems and genital problems. It's not that these things have anything to do with the lung, it's just that this point in particular is connected to the renmai, so that's why it can treat those things. And finally, lung seven is a Luo connecting point, and this gives lung seven some very interesting features. So let's recall the functions of the Luo connecting points. Number one, they treat disorders of the yin-yang paired channel. So here we see that lung seven opens the nose to treat nasal congestion and sneezing. Remember, the lung channel itself doesn't go to the nose and only goes as high as the throat. But it's yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel, does go to the nose, so that's why lung seven, the low point, is able to treat nasal congestion. Next, low connecting points treat disorders along the pathway of the Luo connecting channel. So we see here pain in the wrist, thenar eminence, and thumb, because that's the pathway of the Luo connecting channel that we talked about in the beginning. And finally, Luo connecting points also treat psycho-emotional disorders. So here we see poor memory, palpitations, and laughter, again, highlighting the connection between the lung and the heart. The name of lung seven is Lie Jue, which means broken sequence. And this is referring to the fact that lung seven is off the line of the lung channel, closer to the large intestine channel. So that's a lot of things, but like we said, lung seven is a very important point, so you should probably know all of those things. Next is lung eight, 
which is one soon proximal to the wrist crease. And honestly, this is not a commonly used point. It's the Jing River and metal point of the lung channel. Classically, Jing River points are used to treat cough, shortness of breath, and fever and chills. So you would think this would be a big deal, but it's actually not. Machiocho mentions that it's good for problems of the throat, but even Deadman says that lung 8 is an infrequently used point. Lung 9 is located at the wrist crease on the radial side of the radial artery. Lung 9 is the yuan source point of the lung channel. Remember, on yin channels, yuan source points tonify the yin organs. So lung 9 tonifies the lung, specifically lung qi and lung yin. So if the lung is deficient, it can fail in its function of disseminating and descending, so we might see a chronic weak cough, shortness of breath, and yawning. Also, deficiency can lead to phlegm formation. So if lung qi is deficient, then there's not enough qi to move the fluids, so we can end up with copious watery phlegm. If lung yin is deficient, the heat can dry out the fluids, causing scanty dry phlegm. In either case, lung 9 tonifies the lung, descends lung qi, and resolves phlegm. Lung 9 is also the shoe stream point. Remember, shoe stream points treat body heaviness and pain in the joints. So lung 9 treats joint pain. And lung 9 is also one of the eight gathering points or eight hui meeting points. It's the meeting point of the vessels. And this makes sense because this is where we take the pulse during pulse diagnosis. So lung 9 can treat disorders of the blood, like coughing blood and vomiting blood, and also disorders of the vessels, like heart pain with choppy pulse, weak pulse, or absence of pulse. But like we said, lung 9 is the yuan source point. It's also the earth point on the metal channel, so that makes it the tonification point. So for lung 9, I would remember tonifies lung qi and lung yin. Lung 10 is on the thenar eminence of the hand at the midpoint of the first metacarpal bone. Lung 10 is the ying spring and fire point on the lung channel. Remember, ying spring points are good for clearing heat, so lung 10 clears lung heat, both excess heat and deficiency heat. Now we've learned a couple points on this channel that are good for clearing heat. If we wanted to differentiate them, we could maybe say that lung 1 and lung 5 are better for heat combined with phlegm, whereas lung 10 is better for just heat. One major application of this heat clearing action is lung 10 benefits the throat. Remember, the lung channel ascends to the throat, so by clearing heat, lung 10 can benefit the throat, treating sore throat, dry throat, or voice loss. Because it clears heat, lung 10 can also treat bleeding conditions due to heat, such as coughing up blood or vomiting blood. And then, Deadman has this funny action that lung 10 harmonizes the stomach and heart. But this is a little bit confusing because he doesn't mean that lung 10 harmonizes the relationship between the stomach and the heart. What he actually means is lung 10 harmonizes the relationship between the lung and the stomach and it also harmonizes the relationship between the lung and the heart. So we've seen this before where rebellious lung qi and rebellious stomach qi can occur together. So lung 10 can also treat stomach issues like abdominal pain, vomiting, and hiccup. And like we said in the beginning, the lung and the heart have a very close relationship. They share a residence in the upper jowl. So heat and lung can very easily transmit to the heart and disturb the shen. So by clearing heat, lung 10 can also calm the shen, treating symptoms like sadness, fear, anger, and mania. As for the name, yi ji means fish border. And I'm assuming this is because the thenar eminence looks like the belly of a fish. But for this one, I remember clears heat and benefits the throat. And lastly, lung 11 is on the radial side of the thumb, 0.1 soon from the corner of the nail. Lung 11 is the Jing Well point of the lung channel. Jing Well points are superficial and have a quick effect, so they're able to restore consciousness for loss of consciousness due to wind stroke. Jing Well points quickly clear excess and treat the upper end of the channel, so lung 11 also benefits the throat. 
So here we have two points that clear heat and benefit the throat. The difference is lung 10 can be used for both excess heat and deficiency heat, whereas lung 11 is used for severe conditions due to excess heat or even fire toxicity. In fact, classically, lung 11 was indicated for a disease called childhood throat moth, which more or less corresponds to the modern disease tonsillitis. So for these severe conditions, we would usually prick to bleed lung 11. Jingwell points also treat fullness below the heart, so lung 11 treats fullness below the heart. And finally, lung 11 is a Sun Tzu Miao ghost point, so it's used to treat mania and epilepsy. This is probably due to the fact that this point can strongly clear heat, and also because the lung has such a close relationship to the heart, so it's able to quickly calm severe Shen problems. The name of lung 11 is Xiao Shang. Now in modern Chinese, the character Shang means merchant or business person, so some books will translate the point as lesser merchant. However, in classical Chinese, this character Shang refers to one of the five musical notes, the one which is associated with the metal phase. So other books will translate this as lesser metal or just lesser shang. And we'll see this character, shang, come up in other point names that are associated with the metal phase. For example, spleen five is shang chiu, shang mound, and it's the metal point on the spleen channel. So that's lung 11. It's a Jing well point, so it revives consciousness and clears excess, and it also benefits the throat for more severe conditions. So that was a very in-depth look at these points. Let's go ahead and do a quick review where we just touch on the major actions of the major points on this channel. Lung 1 is the front move point of the lung, so it treats conditions of the lung organ, and it's especially useful for excess conditions like lung heat or phlegm in the lung. Lung 3 is a window of heaven point. It calms the corporeal soul, treating sadness and grief. Lung 5 is the he si water point. It clears lung heat, especially when there's phlegm involved, and it regulates the water passages. Lung 6 is the xi cleft point, so it treats acute conditions and pain, especially acute asthma attacks. Lung 7 is the luo connecting point. It's one of our major points for releasing the exterior. It's the command point of the head and nape, so it's commonly used in headache and stiff neck, and it's the opening point of the ren mai. Lung 9 is the yuan source point, so it tonifies lung qi and lung yin. Lung 10 is the ying spring fire point. It clears heat and benefits the throat. Lung 11 is the jing well point, and like all jing well points, it revives consciousness. It also quickly clears excess and treats the upper end of the channel, so lung 11 also benefits the throat, especially for severe conditions due to excess heat or heat toxicity. So now that we've completed our review of the Han Tai Yin Lung Channel, here are a few things you can do next in order to continue your studies and really solidify this information in your brain. On the website tcmstudy.net, there's a practice test you can take which goes over both point location and point function. After you click each answer, you'll get a short explanation, so that's a good way to repeat the information. If you want to focus on point location, there's a Quizlet-style set of online flashcards that you can go through. Hover your mouse over the card to make it flip over. You can also shuffle the deck to make it a little bit harder. If you want to review this lecture again, you can also listen to just the audio version. That way, if you are in your car, at the gym, or going for a walk, you can listen to the lecture without having the video player open. Links to all of those things are below. And if you're a member of the Patreon, there are a few extra bonuses on the Patreon feed as well. First, there's a bonus video that goes along with this lecture. This video was already getting pretty long, so this is just a few extra footnotes of things that I didn't mention here, but that you might find interesting. There's also some examples of cases where I've used these points in my own clinical practice, so maybe that will give you some more context around how these points are used. And there's also a read-along ebook. I once heard this interesting hack where if you read an ebook and listen to the audiobook at the same time, then you read faster and retain more information. So, this ebook is basically a transcript of this video, so you can listen and read at the same time, and that way you're engaging more of your senses. I left the margins pretty wide, so you can add in your own notes if you want.
So those are a couple bonuses that are just for the members of the Patreon as a way of saying thank you for supporting the YouTube channel and the website tcmstudy.net. So if you got value out of this lecture and would like to give something back, consider becoming a member of the Patreon. This is the easiest way to support this work, and you'll also get access to special bonuses like the ones I just mentioned. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This lecture is part of the library of content that's available for free on the website tcmstudy.net. The goal of this website is to help students like you learn the material, pass your tests, and ultimately become a better healer. Because I firmly believe that the better you understand this material, the more effective you'll be in the treatment room healing your patients. Of course, there's also the reality that you have to pass your test in order to get through school and get your license. And again, my belief is that if you take the time to really understand the material the first time around, that means you'll be able to spend less time studying to review for your big test. That's why I spend so much time explaining why things are the way they are, rather than just telling you to memorize a list of facts. Hopefully, when you do it that way, by the time you get to your boards, you won't need to spend a lot of time and money on expensive review courses. You can just go back and look over the notes that you have to refresh your memory. So if you like this kind of thing, be sure to check out the website tcmstudy.net for more videos, lectures, handouts, flashcards, and practice tests. And we'll see you in the next one.